Is it focused? Is it focused? You have a headache? I think because I put my hair up too tight. I wouldn't know. She has a headache. That's the it's in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Worst time for it. I'm no sorry. night, like bedtime is the worst. Oh, you. But then you could just go to sleep, and then you could just sort of. But you can't go to sleep if you have a headache. That's the problem. Right, right. But if you have a headache during the day, and I, you know, this debate, I, I, I promise not to. I'm, you know, I will not prolong the debate. No, that's but during okay. the day, if you have a headache, you've got to deal with people. And that's the hard part where you can't really connect and speak. At least in bed, mm -hmm. you can just sort of, you know, I've got a headache and you can just live with it. I feel like you're discrediting my feelings about. I, it, it's less about discrediting. I think what I'm trying to do is show you the other side. Devil's advocate? Yeah, a, a little bit of like, just so you maybe that you feel better about the headache. Like, oh, that's true. It, you know. That's fine. Okay, yeah. thank you. Should we start? Yeah. Do you want to start? Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. This is Howie Mandel does stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm his daughter, Jacqueline Schultz. And we have the illustrious Fred Armisen. Illustrious. Nice to see you both. It Hello. is. You're amazing. <laughs> You're amazing. I'm going to start off with uh, with this. Uh, you're amazing because uh, what are you, Fred? You're a musician. You're a writer. You're an actor. You're a comedian. You're an advocate. You're uh, multilingual. How many languages do you speak? Uh, I speak Spanish and uh, maybe a little bit of German. Why do you speak German? My dad's German. Oh, wow. Isn't your dad Korean? He's of Korean descent. Oh. But he grew up in Germany. He was born and raised in Germany. Oh, in, wow. In East Germany, what was then communist Germany. Not now, but at some point, will you come to visit me on AGT and uh, help me understand Heidi Klum? I, I would love to. I can't. First of all, we, we were just walking around this studio, and you've been on there for 14 seasons. Yes. It's incredible. D that's that sentence... You've been walking around here, <laughs> and I've been on there for 14 <laughs> seasons. I'm trying to, I don't know if that was a question. The, I don't know that the beginning of that statement You don't understand the, the connection. The end of the statement. It, it did, because it was your cue to go, uh, yes, uh, it's incredible. It went by so quickly. Or, but what yes, is that we hope to do more. Uh, no, 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 no. But I didn't, I love this, because a lot of podcasts will just be a discussion, but I love that you were breaking down how to... It's like behind the scenes of a discussion. Yes. Or it's, it's like the architecture of a discussion. Right. But why did, you, why did you start that statement? Like you go, I, can't, I said, come because of your German background. Yes. Come help me communicate with my coworker, Heidi Klum, yes. who, is, who is German. And you said, we have been walking around here. Yes. Why, how does that connect with me being on the show for 14 years? Because let's say, well, first of all, because there is a framed picture of all the different seasons. Oh, when we were walking around, you asked. Yeah. So it was like it sort of melts into. Otherwise, then it's just going to be you, you would say that and I'd go, yeah, that would be cool. And then it seems like I'm not thinking about your world. Then it's just like then it's just my world. I like that. It's like we're sharing hey. worlds. Yeah. And I love your uh, your take on uh, the upside. The uh, migraine is half done. How about my world? We started with even oh, before the start. Oh, we did start. start with my world. That's it was all about me. The headache. How quickly I forget. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Are you? Uh, how, does, how, does, how does it feel now? Is it? A little no, bit? it's okay now. I, you made me feel better. Okay, good. Thank you. Wow. Nothing worse than a headache. During backache. the day. Backache. Do you have bad back? Do you have bad my, back? My back's okay, but I'm saying in general, I think, uh, uh, like back pain is the one that's like will that feels really debilitating. Really. What about? But uh, I don't. I don't. I mean, it's. What about like a a severe burn? Oh, that is horrible. Yeah, because that is like that's the attention of the room for the day. Like, ow! And then everyone is like, "What happened?" Put some cold water on it. Put you know, it, it's it does. That's a real emergency. Chlamydia. But, yeah. Same. But that's more. That's like a quiet suffering. As opposed to someone walking into a room going, I have chlamydia. Yeah. It's my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't. I have nothing else to talk about. Thanks for coming. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's. I I was. Uh, he was supposed to be. Fred was going to be here last week, but you were celebrating 400 years of uh, that company. Zildjian symbols. Yeah. Yes. They asked me to host this event. Yeah. And in hosting a symbol event or yeah. a 400 years of that symbol event. Yeah. And we're talking about drum symbols. If you're not, if you're just listening to yeah. this, um, what is involved in like 400 years of? It's really funny because. I mean, it's not that funny. It's just, it's so specific. It really is. It's 400 so, years. Yeah. I keep thinking. A Turkish company started making symbols 400 years ago, 1623. Well, everybody knows that. But No, what, not everybody knows that. What? The math, we take for granted. We take for granted that we could just do that really quickly. There's some people who would take them a moment to kind of go, okay, was that 1723? Was that 1523? You're right. You know, so in 1623, yeah, why did they need a set? Were there, were there drum sets? I don't think there were drum sets. It was just a, it was just percussion. That's a good question. I really don't know. Uh, we started. Why would they have started? Like, psh, well, they had psh. gongs that was a, before drum sets. True. So maybe it evolved from there, and okay, and, bells. So, and then they called you, Fred. They said, "This is 400 years, which yeah. is a, a an incredible milestone." Yeah. Of one specific symbol company. They just make symbols, right? They just make a symbol. That's it? That's it. And and you said I would love to yes. host. Yeah. And and was it a bit was there a big turnout? Oh, it was gigantic. It was like this theater in Boston. They're based out of Boston. This and Turkish like, company is based in Boston. Yeah, they they moved to America, I think, in the early nineteen hundreds. Okay. I could be wrong, maybe late eighteen hundreds. Um and there's all these, it's like a drum nerd thing. Like they're just nerds, drum fans. And did you do, because I loved, I went to see you in concert. And if you get a chance, if he's playing in your, are you, do, are you touring at all? Yeah, yeah, I tour all the time. Yeah, I, I saw a show that was, and I think it, you taped it for, uh, was it on Netflix, your drum? Yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you. I had no idea because I know nothing about really, I, I enjoy music, mm -hmm. but I know nothing about music. And to think it was so um, surprising to think that you were doing a such a specific topic, and it was so interesting, so funny, so um, uh, entertaining. It was and so weirdly creative that you would just focus. It's kind of like four hundred years of them. Thank you. That was amazing. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. I was in the audience, and everybody. You don't have to be a musician if you... No, no, no. It's it's more like about people's uh, experience with music, like going to see bands and stuff. So you don't have to see... You don't have to be a musician. Fred's uh, first dream, your first dream was to be music. You had no idea that you would end up in comedy, acting, television, improv, whatever you're doing. You, it was music was your It was thing. music. Although, in the back of my mind, I, I really loved SNL. So I think somewhere in there, there was like a mix of the two. Why'd you leave? SNL? Yeah. I did 11 years, yeah. 11 seasons. Right. And it's one of those things where, I, mean, I remember Amy Poehler describing it as like, you just can feel it. You're like, I think I've said what I wanted to say. And Bill Hader was leaving, Jason Sudeikis, Seth, I think, uh, soon after. So it was sort of like our group was starting to kind of move on in a way is that a hard thing because i would think like th that's a dream to be on snl and i as one you you just talked mm. about remember we were walking around and yeah in, I the, told in you the studio was, right and then i did i'm this is my 14th season on yeah, AGT. Uh, i can't AGT. imagine leaving you know what i mean it's, 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 i want to be i want to be uh fired or uh let go i don't want to <laughs> be but i'm just saying i can't <laughs> i don't disagree with you i i i, I mean, can't leave parties that's why i don't go to parties it's a really, it's a, it's complicated. Um, and it, the one good thing is you don't really ever leave. I go back every, every season and I'll do a little something. I'm still friends with cast members and with Lauren. So in a way you kind of stay, but the way that that show works is it needs to have like new cast members. It needs to kind of keep. I get it. But you were a cast member who wasn't being asked to leave. You, you're going it's, on your own. I know fruition, it's which crazy. Is a, that is a crazy move. I agree. It's a crazy move, but it felt right. I was doing this other show, 
Portlandia. I love Portlandia. Oh, thank you. You see what? Uh, uh, and uh, do you see what we put a bird on it? Yes. Butter. For those people, I love it. That thank you for that. doing that. I love that. Is that fun to do, Portlandia? That was, that was a blast. I loved it. To write that. Yeah. It's so. It's so wonderfully weird and awkward and just wonderful. I'm glad. I'm glad you think so. You. I think that's your comfort zone. Is awkward. Yeah. And. Like whatever that weird zone is. I love that. And I love when you're on Seth. You know, you're as a, a yeah. well, not only the drummer and the band leader and, and, and whatnot, but I love when he talks to you. Oh, it's, it's fun for me. Is any of that planned? No, purposefully. But like he'll ask me a question, a random question, and we, I never know what it is. Can I ask you a random question? Sure. See uh, it's hard to even you get, come you up get, with a question. You got to you got to go in into it with like authority and like, you know, like we've you know. You're not good at this, Dad. You're you're okay at it. No, well, I haven't done it yet. I haven't even done it. I love I'll that do the fact that you, I love the fact that you are judging how I am at it, and I was able. I said, "Let's do it," and then nothing came to me. Right. And I didn't do it. Yeah. Yet that doesn't stop you from uh, critiquing. Like it's, the nothingness. Yeah, that was, but which is kind of, I mean, what you could say this is what you do in AGT. What is your take on Scandaval? I am so for it in a way <laughs> that I would say that I'm at the forefront of supporting it. Um, I'm a spokesperson for it. Really? So you believe uh, fucking your uh, girlfriend's best friend at her most uh, uh, sensitive time in life. Yes. Not, not me, myself, personally. I'm saying as a Tom. movement. Right. <laughs> the people who do it, I support them. I support everyone's decision. Right. Not for me, but for others. I've got to be a supporter from afar. Okay. So if somebody loses their dog or their grandmother or whatever, and they're really uh, hurting and pining, yes. you think, I mean, you're supporting the fact that their significant other brings yes, a yes, young girl yes, into yes, the house yes, and, and, and fucks her. Yes. Wow. For them. That's a side that I, I didn't expect. Uh, Colleen <laughs> Ballinger. Yes. Talk about... Um, Grooming. Yes. Yes. Young kids. Colleen Ballinger. Yes. yes. Colleen. Isn't it Col Colleen? It's Colleen. And what was the name of her? Amanda Sings or Miranda Sings? Do you know the Miranda Sings girl is in a, in a, in a big kind of... Uh, she is being accused of um, interacting with um, people much younger than herself in an inappropriate way. Yes. You're, you're, you're for that also? No. Oh. No. <laughs> he draws the line. <laughs> that's where I draw the line. Oh, that's you don't where. support that from afar. No. No. How do you feel about that? <laughs> this is, you took it to, it's, this is interesting. Okay. Seth does it very lightly where he's like, you wrote a new book about tourism. Right. You got into some nitty gritty oh. deep stuff. T let me start again. I'm sorry. It's you, okay. Okay. Um, Fred? I, I had not originally known what that the meaning of that word was, but I was going with Fred? it. Fred? Yes. You uh, wrote a book about uh, being an internet sensation and grooming young people. <laughs> 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 what? Do you have a cold? I don't have a cold. I had um, a cough last week. What happened? I tested negative for COVID, um, but then it just sometimes lingers when I laugh. Don't laugh. Okay. Don't please don't laugh. I won't laugh. No, we're germaphobes. I yeah. have a serious. Can I ask a serious question? Yes. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm derailing the podcast a little bit with a serious question. But do you you say you go back to SNL from time to time and you never actually leave? You don't go there and miss it and want to go back ever? It's like the, the equivalent of missing um, like in a, uh, like college or something mm -hmm. where you loved it and it was really fun. And then you, you, I don't want to go back and, and do the actual grind of writing every week and trying to come up with a new character. That's a great week. analogy. That was a great analogy. 
Yeah, Didn't you? Good. Did you understand what he's saying? Yeah. Like he's saying that if he, I if understood. You don't have to mansplain. I understood exactly what he said. <laughs> I think if it's a, if it's your father, it's not mansplaining. I mean, it's dad's blaming. Dad's blaming. Thank you, thank you. It was getting a little iffy. Heated. Here. Yeah. Heated between heated us. From it's time hard to, to work time. with family. Do you? Um, <laughs> how long have you been working together? Well, uh, it depends. Define work. Like, I think the fact that. How about for this? Two, the podcast. Two years. Two years. Two years. We started in COVID. This was our way of communicating with each other mm -hmm. on the phone. And then we, uh, my wife said, you guys are just, what is this for? She didn't understand. My wife doesn't understand that a father and a daughter uh, should communicate um, <laughs> for free. Yes. So she said, well, how can you make some money? If you're going to talk to your daughter, record it. Yeah. Invite other people, put it on YouTube, get sponsors and make money. So this is the only communication we really have but it's it's been worth it well speaking of sponsors play zildjian symbols hit it wow is there a difference between a uh, a brand of symbol i don't think i don't think so in my opinion like i, I you know i the, think that like with drums and symbols they're all it's like the drummer who makes it something sound good so they all sound the the, the you don't in my opinion, I'm like, they're all the same basic idea. Because I was thinking like if you were like a, you know, like a sommelier of symbols, like I can hit a symbol and you could say, oh, that's a Zildjian. That's a there are people who can probably discern it. My ear doesn't discern it. My ear just goes, oh, that sounds like a symbol to me. What's your favorite kind of music? If you when you are just listening to music, I'd say punk rock. That's where you started, right? Yeah. But also, I love salsa music, and I love the Beatles, and... Oh, you were going to explain to me. So right before we started, you have a... Uh, maybe you don't want me to talk about this, but I'll edit it out if you want me to. You have water. It's too late. It's going out live. No. No, this is not live. It's not? No. No. Oh, guys. So we could talk about I alerted water. everyone. I was like, please listen to me. No. Oh. <laughs> I thought this was live. I told all my friends. Is there any friends. switch? Can we switch to live? Is there any way to go out live? You told all your friends to listen to this? Yeah. I was like, support. Oh. We, we were going to talk about what? Water? You had water. Yeah. Now I am going to drink water. Okay. You but you were that? afraid. I said, do you want water? And I said, you can put it anywhere. You can put it on the table. And you said, I'm going to put it down here. I want to hide water because of Paul McCartney. Yeah. Because he has this thing where he like, he doesn't drink water on stage. I Why? Mean, I think he thinks it seems unprofessional. And I kind of agree. I'm like, yeah, it is kind of like, it does stop everything when a performer stops to drink water. And then I've seen podcasts where there's like a water out and it's just, it's distracting. I kind of like the sort of, let's hide the water. Comics are really into having water out. They all have a stool. Like every comic has a stool on stage with water yeah, on yeah. it. That's like their thing. It's a comic thing. Yeah. Not a musician thing, I guess. But you used to, like in, in old-timey uh, TV, whether it was Dean Martin had a glass of uh, liquor or whiskey, or they had a cigar or something like that, I think that's the same kind of feeling of doing something else, smoking a cigarette, taking a sip of water, having wow, a drink. so you support <laughs> smoking. I, I don't yeah. know, like, how Why much not? medical... Proof you need that smoking is very bad for you. You know, um, there's always, an, as you said, there's always another side to every story. You know, it's like he said, she said. And I've heard the argument that smoking is negative, but there are. Well, maybe just like cheating, you don't condone it for, like you wouldn't personally do it. Right. Well, but I'm cutting down. I've just, uh, this is my uh, second week of cutting down on secondhand smoking. Oh, good for you. Yeah. So good for you. It's, I'm right on the edge. It's I'm very gonna, addictive. Oh, secondhand smoking is harder to quit yeah. than, than actual smoking. It is. And smoking does look cool. Yeah, I mean, you have to admit it. Some Because what if I was here, you know? <laughs> Just on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> that was every... All of a sudden, uh, you know... It is cool. All my movements have purpose to it. Did you ever smoke? Never. Never? No. No. 
Do you uh, do you smoke pot? No. Never. 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 Never ever. I was a pot smoker. Yeah. Yeah. You you never. Uh, <laughs> You're being saying a, this in front of your daughter. She knows. I Can do. she hear you? No. Okay. That's why she's wearing a headset. Hers okay. are just, uh, just sound. Music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're in a commercial now. This is the shot? This is a good one for you. Well, as you can see, this one <laughs> is for people who shave. Harry's. And what you're looking at is not Harry. Hey, hey, he hey, went, hey, hey, hey. He went hey, so overboard. Right Stop that it. he shaves like all the way down. No, no, to. no, no. This is not something you want to hear from somebody's daughter. <laughs> you just shave. You just keep going. I'm surprised I you use, haven't shaved your I eyebrows. Use, shh, I use Harry's <laughs> not to be hairy. And it's working. It's working for yeah. me. But they don't want to hear that from my daughter. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, and it's not only that. It's also the uh, products that they have besides just the shavers. You know, the, uh, the, um, what are they called? It comes with a whole set. Can you just hold all the products still? <laughs> Kenny? <laughs> Kenny? The products, there's a whole set. There's foaming, there's shave gel, there's exfoliants, there's and creams, washes, lotions. So that, I guess you're getting a, a close-up of my, <laughs> look how hydrated and look how beautiful my and healthy my skin is. And the starter set is a $13 value for just $3 at harrys.com slash Howie. So you get a crazy deal. Shaving doesn't have to be super expensive. No, it doesn't. You save money. And they make all this stuff in their own factory in Germany so that the blades are really sharp and you get a good close shave. And you can schedule a delivery so you don't actually have to go to the store anymore to buy all your shaving essentials. You can schedule a delivery for refills as low as $2, half what you pay for at other for other blades. And I will tell you, as somebody who uh, shaves often, mm -hmm. um, without you changing daily, the blades, right? I do. But the eighth shave with the same blade mm -hmm. is just as good as the first. You know, they don't get dull real fast. I oh, don't know what good. their special deal is, but... Uh, Take it away, Jackie. Tell them about the offer and everything. Okay. I know you already have, but... You can get your best shave ever this summer with Harry's razors and skincare products. Get a $13 starter set for just $3 at harrys.com slash Howie. That's harrys.com slash Howie for $3 starter set. You can't beat it. No more, uh, Kenny. No more of this commercial. Let's go back to the podcast. Quit while we're ahead. <laughs> um, but I, I would imagine um, not... Uh, partaking in those kind of things and you know it is legendary in, in being around saturday night live that that was maybe a big part of in my run when i was there that was not the case it was not mm -mm. no and it's kind of i also don't see how i mean they're just office rooms you know they they seemed there's just desks and laptops and stuff it doesn't seem very does that get in the way of taking a gummy i don't think gummies were as prevalent when i was there no do you have, are you, is there a significant other with you? Are you right now, are you dating? Yeah, I'm, I'm with someone. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I have a partner. She's wonderful. In the business? Yeah. Oh, wow. Somebody we know? Maybe. You know, Ricky Lindholm from Garfunkel and Oates. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Did you, how do you meet? Do you meet just by work? Or? I've, I've known her for over 10 years. Wow. So th yeah, so sort of through work and just so You never did dating apps or anything like I that. I never did, no. No. I can't imagine. I was going to ask you but you're you're with somebody. I can't imagine that anybody who has the notoriety or is on television and film like just how do you how do you I've been married for 43 years. Mm -hmm. So how do you meet people? But it's pretty self-explanatory. Well, I mean it's a social job. I think this you know, you do I'm get I'm not to social at all. You're probably just a really social person. I don't know. I'm like me. Sometimes I feel like a little bit of a loner in social situations. Like, you know what it is? I leave. I tend to leave parties kind of early. I don't go to them. The only reason I saw you at that event is because they wanted me to do the auction. Yeah. I don't go to any events. I go to where I have to work. I don't go anywhere. I'm fascinated by people who have the ability to just even go out. That's not true. You, I don't think you know yourself. You're I an, don't know myself. <laughs> you're an extrovert. You I'm are an, an extrovert. extrovert. I you don't, are. She doesn't know me. My daughter thinks Do you I'm think it's extrovert. cool just to say that you're an introvert? And no, you we're not getting along. <laughs> she has a point because I did, I did see you at a I was working social there. event. I was working there. I was working there. 
But we I, were hanging out. We were standing beside each other backstage. Yeah. Were we hanging out? I yeah. love seeing oh, you. Don't just no. He no, felt if, like if, you guys were hanging out. You, don't say that you weren't hanging out with him. That's not nice. If you were antisocial, you would have disappeared into a room, mm -hmm. and there were many rooms there. I looked for rooms. There was people in rooms, so I didn't yeah. go in the rooms. So I just stood and waited for my cue. Maybe we're similar. Maybe we're both like sort of like claim to be antisocial, but we do go to uh, certain things. But I think by virtue of what we do for a living, we are forced to do. Like yeah. you didn't. Honestly, let's be honest. You didn't say, hey, Howie, can I come by today and talk to you and your daughter? You didn't say that. Didn't I? No, I said, please, Fred, please. Th this is the, in our business now, this is the obligation that everybody hates. Because everybody, every third person has a podcast. I don't hate it. I love it. You're having a good time? Yeah. Also, this is a chance for us to get to know each other. It's really strange. It becomes like a lunch. You're it just having water. That's all I eat for lunch. I think before you leave today, you guys should make your next plan together to like go out, just the two don't of you. Don't get would, involved in our life. <laughs> I would don't, totally don't do it. it. All right. See, he would do it. All right. You should plan like a dinner, like a dinner. Do you want to go to dinner? I would anytime. Are you being serious? Of course. I would love to go to dinner with you. Yeah, but you seem like you're like a busy person who has like. I'm not this. busy. Am I busy? What are you doing tonight? AGT. AGT. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow too. AGT. But it's the finale. But we right? could have dinner around two o'clock tomorrow afternoon if you want. Sure. What's tomorrow? Right? Wednesday? Yeah. Well, you're busy. No. See? You're not busy. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you, what do you, you're not doing? I, I've, been do, I've been doing a bunch of touring, but I'm not touring this there week. There you go. You're not touring this week. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are your, what, what have you been doing? Stand up? That same, similar show to what you saw, but with more guitar stuff. So it's like the drum show? He's but free guitar. Friday night. He's free Friday night. Friday night, I'm having dinner with another friend of mine. Oh. Well. Can't have two friends yeah. at one dinner. What the fuck is wrong with you? You can't <laughs> have language. two friends. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> That's your daughter. Yeah, he yeah. meant what the hell is wrong with yeah, you. Okay. Thank and you. he's never smoked pot. Don't listen to that. <laughs> I'm not a smoke. I don't smoke now. But I said I had. I don't smoke or a drink. I don't do anything. I don't drink either. You don't? Good. No, Good clean living. It. So let's go out on Friday night and not do anything. Like and, let's not even, not and I don't even like to thinking. eat. I like, uh, I'm doing uh, that, uh, what is it called? That fasting, ult uh, uh, ultimate fasting? No, uh, intermittent fasting. Oh, I was doing ultimate fasting. You should, you're supposed to do intermittent fasting. Fuck, I was do, I'm doing you're the You're doing wrong. the ultimate one. I was doing ultimate fasting. I haven't eaten in two weeks. <laughs> no, you gotta eat. I forgot. That's why I'm a little loopy today. That event that we went to was great. The Who played. Mm-hmm. Green, Green Day. Day. Billy Idol. Yeah. And then John Fogarty. I love John Fogarty. I loved it. John Fogarty was like, you, you see him and you're like, oh yeah, that's great. Some Creedence songs. All of a sudden, oh, one hit, another hit. We just know every single song so well. That's I grew up to that song. Oh, to so I thought the Green Day drummer was amazing. Because oh, where we great. were standing, I didn't really, I've never really focused on the drumming. Yeah. But I was standing beside you and we were standing backstage and yeah. I watched him. And he was a like an incredible showman. But it was like, I would imagine, I don't know that much about the intricacy of music. But the drum oh, drives. He's, he's great. He real is he is he known in the drumming community? Is yeah, he? definitely. Who is your favorite drummer? Do you have a drum hero? Yeah, I'll go through a list of them. Okay, but Clem Burke from Blondie is my favorite. Really? Yeah, Clem Burke from Blondie. Yeah, and then Keith Moon from The Who. Oh wow! Yeah, love Keith Moon. That's a really short list. Yeah, you said I'm going to go through a <laughs> list, and you and just then, had a list. And then I'm, you said, <laughs> you, you, but I wasn't done. I wasn't done okay, with the sorry, list. Okay, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. How long is the list? Because I just want to. Sixty drummers. Oh fuck! Sorry, and I and I talk <laughs> real slow. Okay. Sixty drummers. Ringo. Really? Ringo is yeah. It's simplicity, right? Is uh, uh, he's he's known just for. so he's so expressive. Didn't they were isn't didn't they have another drummer P before P Best? P Best, yeah. P Best, yeah. Yeah, who was not. Who was not simplistic. No, then, he wasn't the best. But I... He, he was the... He left. I think they just didn't you, have chemistry with him or but something. But can you imagine being Pete Best? That's got to be a great story. Somebody has to do a Pete Best. I bet you they've tried. I bet you someone's tried to write a book or something. I bet you there is a book out or something. Because that's, that, that's really... 
Can you imagine, for those that don't know, and I think there's probably two, but Pete Best was the drummer and left, and then Ringo joined, and that no, was No, I think he was, he was kicked out. He was out. kicked out. He was kicked out. Okay. Yeah. I'm so, when He's I say fired. for those that don't know, I was including myself in the list. Okay, hello. Okay, hello. Okay. Wasn't he also better looking, too, than them? Oh, maybe. Wasn't that part of it, too? He was more yeah, of like I, a heartthrob? I wasn't there, but I'll guess that. Did he not have a a gluten sensitivity? <laughs> but here's the bigger, don't we all? Are you gluten? No. no. Do you have any uh, dietary? Dairy, for sure. You can't eat dairy. I can well, eat dairy. Oh, why you are can't? You why are you mm -hmm. telling him? Mom says that most people can't eat dairy. I just thought. She said you. We said today, <laughs> my, my wife said who's on today, and we said, yeah. we said Fred's on, and she said tell him. He's not supposed uh, to eat dairy. I'm allergic to avocado. Oh. What happens if you have an avocado? My mouth gets itchy. When you have an itchy <laughs> mouth, the inside of your mouth? Yeah. How do you scratch the inside like, of your mouth? Like you kind of <laughs> click at it. It's do very, it again. very strange. That's what happens if you have like if, if you it's go very out for, strange, yeah. For guacamole or something. If you will you go to a like a, a Cinco de Mayo party. Will I go to one? Like you'll go to a Cinco de Mayo party and then I have, I avoid I'm it. A, I'm sure like he just doesn't eat. You avoid one. the 5th of May? You avoid Cinco de Mayo? Thank I'm you. turning to him. I with, know. With like, <laughs> I know. No, I look, get it. Like, look at this guy. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get what you're doing. I'm going to do. I'm going to wait till he turns around again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I love that, I love when you, that's what I love. I love when you do something incredibly funny, incredibly in the moment, and are able to take that moment and explain it. Yes. I think that's it's, good. It's a lot weird. of, not enough people do that. It's, it's for someone who would, like, wouldn't understand. I didn't understand. <laughs> Just... Also, I don't know what the camera can pick up if it's picking up this. No, it hasn't. Well, there's it's also audio, saying. so that doesn't really pick that up. All right. So for those people that are just <laughs> listening, like on Spotify or something, he did it. You're on Spotify? Are we on Spotify yeah. and Apple? Wherever, they always say wherever podcasts are available. I don't know where that, I, I used to hate when they used to say movies are coming out at a theater near you. And I, I know. Did, that scared me because I go, how the hell do you know, know where I am? Like, don't, like, don't. Why is that the prerequisite that it has to be near you? So, to, so that um, if you don't go, I would imagine that I was always afraid that they would call me on Tuesday. And yeah. I, uh, why weren't you there? It's, it's a silly thing to add, for we're, sure. We're near you, and you didn't show up. I'm like, up. what if I don't go to the one near me? I'll go to the one in Culver City. No. Because my friend lives there. I'm no. going to that one. No. You are... You're a rebel. No, I was with you. I'm on, I'm on your side. I'm no, agreeing I I'm with not you. I'm not arguing with you, but, but I'm you're just pointing fingers. You're pointing fingers. You're at pointing me. fingers at a at a digital image. Does, does pointing bother you? Uh, no. Anyway, okay. I'm gonna do. Uh, I got I got requests, so I'm gonna play a couple songs. <laughs> something how come you left out the 400 year old uh symbol did you write this yeah yeah what is that what is that called what was what mozambique mozambique yeah which means it's just a, a st style of rhythm oh is it is that real yeah. the mozambique yeah that was a mozambique not to be confused with cha-cha-cha. Uh, That's amazing. I, you know, that makes me jealous, to be honest with you. I cannot... You see, you see entertainers all day. No, but I, I, my real... I, I, and I think... You see, you're living the dream that I would love to live. I think most... And you probably have heard this before. But most comedians want to be a rock star. And it's, most it's true, rock yeah. stars want to be comedians. Yeah. And, and I don't mean it's not necessarily rock, but you want to be able to do music or you do it all. I would love, not even to be able to perform it, I would love to be able to even sit down 
and do that. That was really, that's really entertaining. And I would do that if I had the ability. I, I have no rhythm. Oh, uh, I don't know if that's true. It's true. <laughs> Does anyone in your family play music? My brother plays music. My, uh, her brother plays the drums and guitar, and oh, is, nice. he's talented. She can dance. I can't dance. Um, uh, so I'm what the only Riley one. What can Riley do? What? What can Riley do? She's playing the piano now. You know that? No. Yeah, she plays the piano. How many kids do you have? How many do we have? Three. I think three. 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 I and, have and what are their names? I'm, um, I'm Jacqueline. I mean, the other people's names. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is my brother. Alex. Alex built this studio. Hey, Alex. It. Thank you, Alex. We love you. Okay. And then Riley is the youngest, my sister. Who's pregnant. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, she just turned 14, so we're, you know, a little... Happy? Mm, concerned. Concerned, yeah. She's very popular. Very, very popular. But you'll so, have more family members. That's then. good. That's why we know that we always look at the bright side of yeah. whatever's happening. Yeah. So she's uh, pregnant and uh, out of school today with cramps. Wow. Yeah. So uh, did you say cramps or crabs? Uh, cramps. Well, this week it's cramps. Wow. Last week. Who yeah. knows? You don't know. That's why she brought up the chlamydia. She doesn't know. She doesn't share with us if she has crabs. She's gonna kill us. <laughs> 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 she, she's secret sister yeah she, she doesn't, doesn't like, like to be talked about or anything no she doesn't like to be talked about she doesn't like her picture taken um she's not even in her own wedding album when when she comes up in conversation does she say would you mind not doing that yeah 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 she doesn't you'll never she's meet. not on social media she's not on any social media she's nowhere so we're we, so, oh ew <coughs> ew oh, oh, oh. shit oh ew. oh Oh my God! Can we put oh up a picture God. of my sister? Can we find no, a picture? No, <laughs> Let's no, no! Put up a picture, of no. Riley. No, well, why are you changing the subject? Did you just hear? The, the, that disgusting. was real. That's because I was laughing. It was disgusting. That's I'm how sorry. you laugh. <laughs> no, it's it's my cough from last week is coming up from my when I laugh. I'm it's sorry. very phlegmy. Yeah, it's like really it's and like low. It's like, like a loogie. It's like coming yeah. from your sphincter. Like gargly. Yeah. Really low. Are you concerned? Did you see a doctor? I haven't seen a doctor. No, you just. You brought it to us. But it's a week old. What does that mean? I feel like it's... It's, going, it's, it's dissipating. Yeah. I'm sorry. Do you know where you got it? No. No. Are you, do you have any concerns whatsoever uh, with... Did you get COVID? I had it last year, yeah. I had it too. Did, was it bad for you? No, it, it, was like a, it was like a cold or a flu. But emotionally, it was weird. I, I was like, how did I get it? Really? <laughs> in, in my ego, you know, what? I was like, I went so long not getting it. And all of a sudden I was like, what? And you thought, why? Why me? Why me? Yeah. I'm like, I can't believe this famous virus right. made its way to me. I was in England. Wait, wait, so, wait, this famous virus. So it was, you felt like honored or you felt like it was, you were beneath it or you, you were, were like, chosen. Yeah, or, or more like, wow, this thing is real. Wow, all right. What were you doing? In nice England? to meet you. I what was uh, I was shooting documentary now. Documentary now is great. And I missed work. I missed days. I had to stay home at my hotel. Documentary now. You're still making them? Yeah, that's that's pretty recent. That season that we did. And are you going to do another season? We'll, we'll do more. We, do, we we do it very casually. What does that mean? Like how many a year? Like well, every couple of years we'll sort of start gathering to that's you bill and seth is it yeah john mulaney writes john mulaney yeah what a group of people yeah that's got to be fun like the the entire process right just to, the whole to, thing to, is insane and, and fun great, and great incredibly talented people just getting together coming up with ideas and then shooting them that's fantastic yeah yeah i love doing it can i be in one of course sure Okay. When? Do you, would you want to? I would love to. It's a lot of work. Now you're trying to talk me out of it? I'm just telling you. He doesn't actually want to hang out with me, Jack. I guess I do. Start well, we're small. Doing dinner. Start small. Friday dinner. Friday? I have to... He's I could do something. Saturday. He's got something. Shabbat. <laughs> I don't do that. That's Friday night. 
No, Shabbat, Saturday. He said Saturday. He didn't say oh. Saturday night. Sundown? After sundown? After sundown. Let's get together. Well, okay. Are you being serious? Yeah. Are you kidding? I feel like we, we're pretty good at, like, texting each other. I think we are. We see each other, uh, so for those like that every, don't know. Every year or so, we sort of... We've actually, if you think about it, we have seen our, uh, we've, uh, Fred and I have seen each other uh, four times over the, four or five times over the last uh, lifetime, I think. Five times? Have we yeah, but it? I feel like we know each other, though. You guys text. That says yeah. a lot. That says a lot. You did one of my favorite videos on Saturday Night Live, one of my favorite impressions. Well, I did you. Roll it. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Deal or No Deal. <laughs> I'm Howie Mandel. By picking one case, you can go home with one cent or one million dollars. One banker, one button, and just one question. Deal or no deal? deal. <laughs> I love yeah, that. that you know, I called you right after that. Do you remember that? I phoned you the next morning. Oh, you did? I did phoned. That's the first time I actually spoke yeah. to you. And that's when I, I met you. And it was so funny and so good. Thanks. And you really captured my, the essence of what. Just very, it was like presentational. Well, you know, the, uh, not the, to make this about me at all, but that's exactly what it was. What happened was that show was really hard for me because I innately want people to do well. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, being face to face with somebody who is making ridiculously stupid decisions. That's tough. You know, it really is. Cause you know, a, a person would come on and tell me they have three kids, no health insurance. They've yeah. never owned a home. They got $5 in the bank and I'd go and you know, the first offer is $20,000 and you live in Omaha someplace. That's a down payment on a house. That's a, yeah. more than you're making for the year. And they go, no deal. And they would just show, right. And that's really hard for me. It was good for the game. And to, for the show, I guess. So what happened was, and I had all this stuff planned where I was gonna be really funny. I didn't wanna do a game show. And then when I realized that they were doing this, I started talking to them like I talked to my kids when they were five, because I wanted them to focus and hear me. Yeah. And I'd go, the offer is $20,000. Yes. Yeah. $20,000. Yeah. This is a lot of money. Yeah, but it. But what was so funny is to watch you yeah. take what I was trying to do, and I went. It, it, it just hit me so hard. It was so wonderful that you picked up on uh, what in my mind didn't. I didn't realize it was so out there, but I was so over the top presentational. Yeah. It was so funny and oh, so comedic. Thanks. I cried watching oh. it, and the fingers and the and the, the oh, hand and movements the hand movements <laughs> and everything it was my favorite moment of watching snl just because i just i was incredibly honored you know and i thought you did such a good job but i thought the essence of what would make it like if somebody told me they were going to do me from yeah. deal or no deal i go why is that even funny like i didn't see it you know and then when i saw you i went number one this is hysterical and number two he's just when you on Saturday Night Live, when they say, "Okay, they're going to do a deal or no deal sketch," yeah, the, is it, um, and and you're going to play a real character, whether it's me or anybody else? What do you do? Do you sit and watch tapes of the? How do you? Yeah, or, or do you also, come to them to say, I, or do you come? No, this one I think was the opposite, where they just asked, "Like, can you do Howie?" And I was like, "Yeah, I think I could do it." And then I try to do like sense memory, like I try to remember. I'm like, he's kind of like. And as I start saying he's kind of like, it starts sort of happening or not happening. If it's someone who I can't do, I got to say like, no, let's maybe ask, you know, Bill or somebody. Did you ever do somebody and get a negative reaction from that person? No, I think everyone's been positive. Did you ever do somebody right to their face? Never. Okay. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, I remember one time I did... Gene Simmons, um, and I kind of got to do it for him recently. Really? I bumped into him somewhere, and I kind of got to, you know. He would love that, though. What does Gene Simmons sound like? He's, he's done this podcast. Kiss fans around the world. 
<laughs> that's exactly yeah. that is exactly it's kiss fads the kiss fads yeah he's very you got him okay we're in a liquid iv commercial kenny i know that they want the products displayed but this is not you start talking jackie you need another one no more <laughs> kenny no more and why didn't you make them even on both sides? go ahead talk about it. liquid iv it's important it's important to hydrate I, I don't love sleep. hydration. I don't sleep. I love hydration. I do. Your... I love hydration. That's been the one I thing about. I love being hydrated. <laughs> it makes me feel so good. Well, no, a... no, no, no. But I was going to say for my hot girl walk. I I'm do... dedicated for my hot girl walk. I do... When I do my hot girl walk, uh -huh. I always like to hydrate. Yeah. But, you know, because I don't sleep uh, enough and it's good. Or if you're up all night, I like binging on uh, shows because that's when I watch them at night. And then if I drink enough water, I don't feel as bad. Or I, I'm not drinking water. I don't drink enough water. That's, what I was that's say. why I use this stuff, and then I end up. It tastes good. It hydrates. It uh, gives me energy. It's uh, it, it's actually faster to hydrate than actual just water. And it's got three times the electrolytes. It's got vitamins. It tastes great. How do they get it, Jackie? You grab. <laughs> Grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code Howie at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code Howie at liquidiv.com. And this one is also an energy multiplier. Oh, I'm sure I've got an energy multiplier. I've got everything. Kenny, I have too much. Kenny. Here. I'm overhydrated. <laughs> Liquid IV. Can we get back to the podcast and move this stuff away, Kenny? Yeah. It, it, so you're an impressionist too. You can do impressions. Some, I mean, only there's some that are in my wheelhouse, but there's some that I, you know. But I, I think that's about being a good musician too. You got to have an ear, right? You're hearing the. It sound. seems like it's a hearing thing. Yeah, it is a hearing thing. Yeah. I'm not a good impressionist. I don't have. I, I'm. I'm fascinated by you. Um, but, you go ahead. I mean, I know this is about me, but. Your career, you've gone all over the place. I mean, right? You could say that you're and, and, you're a great music, a musician. Uh, you're a great comedian. You're a great impressionist. You're a really good writer. You're a very smart guy, and that's you. And me, I've gone all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you went from stand up. Yeah, I remember when you went from stand up to Saint Elsewhere. I remember thinking like, oh, that's a move that people do. I'm like, oh, I see. You can. It was an accident. I wanted to do, as a comedian, I thought at that time, the, the move was to sitcoms. I was trying to get on a sitcom. At and that's it's cooler that you were like, no. I'm it ended up being cooler by accident. Yeah. Every job I've ever had, I didn't know. But that's what, I, in, in reading about you and doing some, I, I, get you can't I bet you can't tell, but I did some reading on you mm -hmm. before this. It feels like you've dovetailed into all these different things, kind of, naturally and artistically and by accident like you're saying you had snl but you were a punk musician yeah and a, there isn't a segue from punk music to no it is it does feel kind of accidental everything right yeah. from filmmaking to serious yeah to, you just kind of say yes to a lot of stuff and then something works out but it's how did the people that knew you as a punk how did how did comedy how did anything funny come out of I, punk I, music? In 1998, I started making videos of me interviewing bands uh, right. as different characters, and that's the sort of that got me into comedy. Really? What was a uh, and I and I made a, a friend of mine edited it, and I would give them away as VHS tapes. Are they on YouTube? Yeah. And what is it? What is it's that? called? Fred Armisen's Guide to Music and South by Southwest. Oh, you went, was it like a prank thing? I remember kind you- Kind of, Did kind they of. know that you were being funny or- Some and some didn't. I remember watching that and thinking yeah. it was like a hidden camera thing. Like you weren't a real- I, Like I wasn't a real, like I pretended to be a German journalist. Right. And then some of them didn't know I wasn't really German. But that was before, before Sasha, everything. Sasha Baron Cohen. It was, but it's that kind of thing, wasn't it? Where you, you know, it was similar to, there was a British comedian named Dennis Pennis who was doing stuff like that. Dennis Pennis? Yeah. Wow, I didn't British know. Guy, yeah. Let's see this, even a moment from this, from- uh, South by Southwest. South by Southwest. This is, so you're saying some did know and some didn't know? Yeah. Some of them I, were musicians who, who I was already friends with. 
Should I say wow, more? you guys are you guys have a good research department. <laughs> Hello there. I'm Fred. I'm in Austin, Texas right now for something called the South by Southwest Music Convention. It's an annual convention in which national touring bands, booking agents, managers, and record label executives meet. Hey, can I, can I borrow your microphone? <laughs> Why are you here in Austin? Um, I came to South by Southwest with MTV doing some interviews. That's Janine Garofalo. You must have yeah. known her. You didn't know her? Uh, that's the first time I met her, but she knew I was up to something. You don't do police work or FBI type things for hurting people or arresting them? No? Not usually, no. Yeah. Why is that a common thing? Uh, yes, because uh, <laughs> in Germany sometimes the police, they come to your door and they want to find things out and so they go to cities and they bring a camera or whatever. So I should be asking you that, you're the one with the camera in the city. Oh, she's, she's with the camera. Uh -huh. but, uh, uh, but that's actually funny. That's, I, I just thought that that was really, I remember watching that because I'm a huge, one of my favorite things and the thing that inspired me to get into comedy if I was going to get into comedy was Alan Funt and on Candid. Oh yeah, he was great. So that any any great. anything on YouTube where I thought somebody was playing a character and the other person didn't know, I remember watching that. Not I didn't even, until you told me today yeah. that that was you, I didn't remember that that was you, but I remember a guy going to the... I remember seeing that. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember seeing Janine Garofalo. I, th I think I've seen some other... She was... Because she was there at the festival. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, doy. <laughs> <laughs> did you talk to... How many people did you talk to that, that weren't there? <laughs> I mean, that was foolish of me. Wow. I can't believe I... I you want to start over? It's like, let me try it again. Okay. Yes! Right. Wait, wait. Let's start over. Let's, let's start over. Start one more yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. No, the music. This is Howie Mandel does stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Jacqueline Schultz, his daughter. And today we have Fred Armitage as a guest. Welcome, Fred. Yeah, we were just talking about headaches, and <laughs> you, we were saying the difference between daytime headaches and nighttime headaches. Right. And I was saying, well, nighttime at least you can go to bed, but... We had a bit of a debate about it. Yeah, right before I we started. I feel better now, though. You, you made me feel better. Okay, good. So, what have you been up to lately? Touring. Yeah. You want to plug some dates? Yeah. Go ahead. March 1st in uh, Chile and Santiago. I'll be there for one year performing at the Los Chilenos. Starting March 1st? Yeah. For a year? Yeah. Okay. It's an arena. I hope we fill it. For a year. Yeah. Well, I hope you do too. Well, you put it's a lot of, a lot of ticket sales that we got to get to. What will it, what can they expect for that, uh, that show? Is that show in English? It's in Spanish and it's all requests. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Do you perform a lot in Spanish? A little. I loved your HBO show. Oh, thanks. Los Espookies. Los Espookies. I watched that. That's it's so. Thank you. Are you coming back for another season? No, that was it. Two seasons. Oh, I love that. I love everything you do. And they're so vastly different, you know? They're Thanks. really, they're really different. You, Thank you. Do you have a, uh, is there, aside from Chile for a year in an arena, Yeah. Do, uh, if they go to fredarmanson.com, do they get uh, dates? And I don't update any of that. I should. It's but. good to not promote. <laughs> and uh, I got to get better at it. I really do. You don't, uh, uh, you'll be doing uh, how so it's just surprise visits wherever you, like surprise I'm in your city tonight? I, I don't go that far, but I do, I don't do the thing where like way in advance I promote it. Like what, an hour? <laughs> an hour. <laughs> do you have any, what, what songs do you like? What can I do for you? Whatever you want. Go ahead. No, you, you, oh, you any like? song? We request a song? Yeah. In, in what genre? You any, whatever you like. Um, well, I love salsa. I do love salsa music. You know I love salsa, right? I didn't know that. I learned something new every day about my dad. No, it's just because I've been, tonight I'm going to work with... Uh, um, Sophia? Sophia Vergara. Does Sophia like salsa? I don't know. I'm, I Are you just assume, assuming because... I assume, <laughs> I, is, that, is that a bad <laughs> assumption if somebody is... Hispanic? Look at the look, look at the look I'm giving you. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're Venezuelan. Or yes. you have a Venezuelan. My, my mom is Venezuelan. Did you speak Spanish in the house? Yeah. Wow. Was that your first language as a little kid? No, no, it was English, but it was we learned Spanish and English. 
Uh, how many uh, siblings do you have? I've got a younger sister and an older half brother. And do they are they in the business? No, my sister's a doctor. What kind of what? Family practice. Wow. Yeah. So does it? Do you go to? Will you go to your? Does your sister? If your sister's a doctor, yeah. Can, does she look after you? Can she? No, but I do sometimes ask for advice, and I do sort of check in with her and say. Like at your age, would you allow your sister to check your prostate? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not cool. <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right. <laughs> Some technicality. <laughs> so play something. Uh, oh, how about we guess what the song is? Is that? Ooh. Oh, is that? I don't know. You don't want to. That's a tough one because. How about the guys in the back make a suggestion? Or, or do a drum solo. I, this is, is this the perfect setup? I would imagine. No, it. it's, it's way, it's more. <laughs> well, there's a coffee table in the middle of a drum set. There seems to be a coffee table. Uh, it's because his water's in the way. Oh, if you didn't have your water, we would be able to bring and it And I up. could read while I do it too. <laughs> yes. And there's a lot. <laughs> No one does this. No one, no one reads and, and drums. If you're just listening to this, he's got a book open on. Oh, no. Oh, damn it. Oh, the book closed shit. in the middle of the song. No one does this. No one. You're not doing it right now. <laughs> Can you read out loud? I had a light bulb moment. <laughs> well, it has to be with a song, I said. What? A song. A song from the crosses. A ridiculously cheery song about looking at the bright side, like a Disney song. That was good. What book is that? <laughs> Eric Idle. You know Eric. You probably worked with Eric, right? I, I've spent time with him, but I've never worked with him. When you spend time with somebody without working with them, yeah. is there, did you talk or it was just... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, we've hung out. Oh, it's just like yeah. not an elevator ride. No, 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 no. I'm such a huge Monty Python fan. Were you a big Monty Python Lo fan? Loved Monty Python. Loved and love Monty Python. Yeah. I do. And Eric seems like a really nice guy. I've met him, but I don't know him. He's you know? great. He seems great. Yeah. Yeah. I've never met any of the other ones. Uh, I met John Cleese, but never Michael Palin. You've no. never met Michael Palin? No. Is he, doesn't he seem so cool? All of them uh, yeah. do. All of them. I would love to meet all of them. I've only met Eric Idle, and yeah. I watched as a kid. It, well, no, I wasn't a kid. Well, maybe I was incessantly. When was it on? The 70s? Yeah. Yeah, and now for something completely different. Oh, so good. That was an amazing show. And I also grew up in Canada, so we had a lot of uh, BBC TV. Oh, so you got I, plenty of it. Yeah, I got plenty of it. So I, I, uh, I, I watched that. I actually like that kind of comedy. Brit British comedy kind of Fantastic. tickled me much more than American comedy. What city did you grow up in? Toronto. I'm from Toronto. You've been to Toronto. Oh, a bunch. I saw, yeah, and I saw you in Canada. You were at JFL. You were at Just mm. for Laughs, and you were the highlight of my week there. You truly were. And, You're uh, very kind. No, I'm honest. I'm honest to a fault. So You're very nice. I know. I know. Um, what are you looking at? All your stuff up here. I got stuff. He's got knickknacks. Patty Whack, give a dog a bone. Wow. Who's your Do least you, favorite person that came on SNL? In this room. <laughs> Um, it's, it was all great, honestly. No. You're lying. The, 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 no. the fact that you had, honestly, That's there had to be an there asshole that you had a run in with or they had a run in with that was really hard. You know, we've all read about the Steven Seagal's and the- I, I, But I wasn't there. No, I know you weren't there. So what, what I'm saying is there had to be those kind of moments. Every I, week you have a new guest host. My experience was everyone was- very kind, very funny, really nice. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Absolutely. Everyone was funny, kind, and nice. All great. You're a liar. No, I'm telling you. No, you're a liar. Maybe he's I don't just want you very to say positive. He's just a very positive person. Did you ever have a fight with a fellow? <laughs> oh, he's laughing ew, again. Ew. Why does he laugh? <laughs> just like, oh, this Stop is laughing. Whatever you make me laugh. I'm sorry. That's not a laugh. You're you're a liar. <laughs> Um, he's very, he's a very nice person. Didn't break you into laughter. <laughs> Not everyone was funny, but sometimes funny is overrated anyway. Really? Yeah. I sometimes like if someone was like, uh, an athlete 
or a politician, sometimes it was just better because it was just weirder and I love that. It well, you served, also it like, served the sketch better. And also as somebody and this is what draws me to your kind of comedy and your I love that very um underplayed, realistic, quiet, kind of awkward, real I don't like jokes. That's more I'm, British. I'm, I'm with you. And I don't like, I never liked, for the most part, there was a few I did, but I never liked sitcoms because it wasn't a sitcom. You know, sitcom is short for situation comedy. The situation Thank was you. never funny and everybody just seemed like Borscht Belt comics. Yeah. Like everybody, to me, that's almost funny in to laugh at, not yeah. with. And you I see the punchline coming and everything. But yeah. not everybody talks like that. So I know. I, I know. would like the character. Every character you've done, I be, no matter how bizarre it is, is very real. And I like that awkward. So w you're right. When somebody isn't funny by yeah, the I, I, standards. I'm, it's, some, it's more memorable. And, and when someone kills all the way through, it's almost like, oh, well, that's what was supposed to happen. Do you enjoy, what is your fa favorite thing? Is it music, stand-up? Acting, I really writing. do like the, the mix of the both, of, of doing stand-up and music at the same time. I love it. Well, that, that's why that show is... Uh, so I'm, I'm telling the people, uh, you got to go. I know it's not advertised anywhere. I know he doesn't post it anywhere. <laughs> um, if you get a chance uh, to go to Chile, you have a year. You have a year to go I see I don't know why man. I came up with Chile. I, um, uh, oh, it's not true. No, that was that. I made, I made that up just for effect. How many times have you lied in this podcast? Three. The Chile, the Chile one, the one where I pretended to know what that word was. Scandal. Yeah. Yeah. What does that word mean? <laughs> so on uh, Vanderpump Rules, you know, it's it's a reality show. I know the show, but I have yeah. So they had uh, Tom Sandoval. Uh, cheated on his girlfriend and that became Scandoval and in pop culture. Oh, they call it Scandoval. Yeah. It's a mix of his name with Scandal. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then what was the mechanics behind it? Why was it that it's, why is it more than just cheating? Well, that's was what I was asking. Oh, you're both going to be in you're big gonna trouble get, you're now. Gonna get, well, you're not on social media, are you? But I, I don't know. I, I, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> so I heard about this. I had him on and I said, tell me why I'm seeing this on CNN, why I'm seeing this in the, in the New York Times. Why am I seeing a guy cheating on his girlfriend from some reality show that I've never seen? Why You is asked him directly? Yeah. And it's our biggest episode and the most hate I've ever gotten for not- But then not why- Andy Cohen why called me he, a jackhole. Why did he agree? Why? Because I apparently didn't do my homework and and know a lot about the show, but I wanted him to explain oh, to I me see, like I you're see. explaining, like you, like I'm explaining to you. You'll see. If and then, but then, why, you why did he why did he agree to come on the show? Did he? Because I said I won't. Why don't I just? You can come on and just tell me what your side of this whole big news blow up is, and I won't challenge you. Uh, okay, so you had him on because of this news thing. Mm -hmm. That's how I. Yes. By the way, I had never heard of this news thing. Really, this is the first. So now that you know about it, you want to start again? No, that was like a, the role that I was playing in the beginning of this interview. Yeah. I don't need to. I mean. It we was, could start the whole. We could start it again. Thing again. We started it once already. Is that too many times? That's way too many times. Okay. I could try one more time. Because then yeah. if you asked it again and then I was like, I'm against it. Then it's, it's not. If, then. No, I wasn't going to do that bit again. I'm just saying this to clear, clear oh, okay. the air. To clear okay. the air. All right, okay. go ahead. This is Howie Mandel does stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Jacqueline Schultz, his daughter. And we have the beautiful Fred Armisen here today. Woo! Welcome, Fred. Thank you so much. We were talking about headaches earlier and the difference between daytime ones and nighttime ones. And uh, I thought they were better at night because you could sort of go to bed. But we had a, b a bit of a debate. Uh, I'd say a friendly debate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's okay. Well, thanks for coming. I, I know you're busy. I sure. know you're, uh, somebody said that you're going to be working in Chile for like a year. Yes. Doing stand up. You, wow. That is exciting. Do you love that? Is that what you really. I love it. And um, it's, you know, you know. I do know. Yeah. I do know. Then if, and if I know, why ask? Why ask? That's a waste of time. But effort. then people get to learn more about it that's a, a good but reason. i don't think people are listening to this to learn necessarily as much as to just 
be entertained. Can learning and entertainment be the same thing? That's a question. Yeah. That's all. We don't know. We don't have to answer it. It's yeah. a question. Rhetorical? That's the rhetorical uh, means that it is just a question. A posed question. I know what rhetorical means, Dad. That's I what we were explaining to you. I was you. explaining to the... <laughs> we are explaining to you that to what rhetorical w- means... Why would you say it without knowing it's, it's, what it means? It, it's, you don't need an answer to it. Okay. Do you want to end the podcast? Never. <laughs> really? Never. 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 <laughs> Never. No. There's got to be an ending to this. I'll play a ballad, a slow sort of like. Okay. Well, and, and well, I tell people to subscribe, comment. This is like a more of a sad. Oh, I stepped on my water. Would you step on his water? It's that's in the why way. you don't bring it on. The, that's why it should be on a table. You're right. You're no you Paul McCartney. He's free Friday night. Friday this night in memoriam. I'm doing a dinner with another friend. Oh. Can I have two friends at one As dinner? we close out 2024. <laughs> the language. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> That's your daughter. Yeah. He meant what the hell is wrong with yeah. you. Fred is, uh, you can see Fred. I was going to talk oh, over. Sorry. <laughs> that was a great analogy. Fred Did you, did you is, understand uh, what he's saying? Brilliant yeah. comic. A brilliant he's comic. He's saying that if he, uh, you can go I see understood. his stand up. You don't have to mansplain. I understood time exactly time, what he said. The drums, he's the band <laughs> I think if it's, a, producer, if it's your father, it's Seth Meyers. I mean, it's dad's uh, the 8B band. Dad's 8G band. Oh, no. 8B. I'm Canadian. There's an exchange rate. Uh, oh, yeah. B in Canadian no. is never? G never. in American. Never. Oh, never it's ever. Like currents. I was a pot okay. smoker. You have to so for Canada, yeah. the 8B band. You, you never. Uh, You're being, saying this um, in front of and your what, doctor. what else? Uh, uh, she knows. Doc Now. Uh, the documentary show is. Uh, yeah, or whatever. I, I, I don't need he to. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> you can watch him. That's the I'm just rhetorical. happy to be here. He is happy. He is so happy to be here. And question. this was a precursor to us Opposed spending. Question. I guess. No, what we're coming again. Means, that's, that's what we were explaining to I you. Was explaining <laughs> to the. We're explaining to you that to what rhetorical means. means. Why would you say it without knowing it's, it's, what it means? It. Maybe we'll get a sponsor who is a decongestant. Like a, I want to sound beautiful. That doesn't sound beautiful. Mm-mm. That's an ugly, ugly, horrible sound. You're right. I can't tell if we're starting again or we're ending. <laughs> this should be an ending. Thanks for. I love you guys. I'm still going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>